we're now ready to do interpretation of the secret book of John, part one. I'm going to do half of it. The reason why I'm going to do the secret book of John is because somebody on the channel asked me to do the secret book of John because they said that I said that the secret book of John is the key scripture, the key gospel to understanding all the other Gnostic scriptures. And he's right. He's right. So, yeah. So thank you. See, you can help me. I'm helping you, and you can help me, and we help each other, and we all help each other, right? So cool. Thanks. So now we're going to do the secret book of John. Okay. Now, something I want to say, and another reason why I'm doing these, interpreting these, the Gospels now, <clears throat> I'm going to get into it, <clears throat> is because there's people um, doing doing a, uh, <laughs> doing these gospels, interpreting interpreting these gospels. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. They're interpreting it wrong. And I found out why because I was on Facebook and I saw somebody put a gospel, a Gnostic. They're calling themselves the Gnostic Nazarene Gnostics or something. I don't know. And <laughs> and they got this gospel and they're saying God and they're saying all this stuff and they're saying church and go to church and I'm like. What the heck? Because they're reading from the, the the Gnostic Bible from Marvin Meyer. And that's a bogus book. It's crap. That Anything that comes from that the, the Gnostic Bible that Marvin Meyer made is crap. He's altering and changed everything. And he's saying what he thinks it means. He's making it sound like religion. He's making it into religion again. So get away from that. that get away from... This is the book, man. This is the book that's going to tell you what's up. That's the truth. Because none of these, these scriptures have been uh, in, uh, translated exact. They left the brackets in. And to let you know what they added and didn't add. Okay, now this one, the secret book of John, this gospel, I look, I'll look reading through it and looking all through it, all the brackets are filled in. So what that tells me is that what they did with this one they found another secret book of John somewhere else. Because this was came from the Nag Hammad Library. They found it somewhere else. And they added it in. And it all fit perfect. So all the missing pieces are here. Okay? Now this is the smaller version. There's another version longer that tells you how God raped Eve and made uh, brought forth Cain and Abel. Okay? But this is the short version. I'll let you know about that when we get to that part, but that'll probably be in part two. All right, so let's get started. The Secret Book of John is a gospel that explains everything. Now, I, I did a video on Norea. Well, Alaleth, the angel Alaleth, came down and to Norea and taught her the, all the whole Gnostic truth, which is kind of like this. But it's, it's shortened, it's, it's shorter, and it's quicker. But it's this is what Aleph is telling Norea in that, in that gospel. Okay, well here we go. Here it goes. Here we go. The secret book of John. All right. Oh, uh, something else. Let me show you one more thing. Whenever you read these gospels, you see all this right here? See this right here? You can see it. Okay. This is what Bart Ehrman is telling you about what he thinks. What he thinks. He don't know. Okay. Don't ever read these prefaces. Don't ever read these. Only start from where the gospel starts from what Christ is saying. So you can learn and under have an understanding on your own by your own from with your own self of what Christ is saying, do not read what a human's telling you what he thinks because he doesn't know. This will throw you off. Only read the gospel, not the prefaces of what the, uh, the, the guy who wrote it thinks because he, he don't know. They don't know. We know. They don't know. All right. So here we go. I right, got that out. All right. The teaching of the Savior and the revelation of the mysteries and the things hidden in silence, even these things which he taught John, his disciple, hidden in silence. Where's silence? 
It's inside the mind. The inner mind is silence. I can hear the sound of silence. I just said I can hear the sound of silence within my mind. I can hear the sound of silence. That's material sound. What I said in my mind is the sound of silence. That's where it's hidden. It's hidden. Remember that Gospel of Philip where I showed you? It is not hidden in the darkness or the night, but it is hidden in a perfect day and a holy light. Hidden in silence. The holy light is the silence. Okay. And it happened one day when John, the brother of James, who are the sons of Zebedee, had come up to the temple that a Pharisee made Arab Aramanius approached him and said to him, a Pharisee is the same thing as a priest, okay, and said to him, where is your master whom you follow? And he said to him, he has gone to the place from which he came. The Pharisee said to him with deception, did this Nazarene deceive you? And he filled your ears with lies and closed your heart and turned you from the traditions of your fathers? When I, John, heard these things, I turned away. I turned away from the, from the temple to a desert place, and I, grieved a, a great, a, and I grieved greatly in my heart, saying, How then was the Savior appointed, and why was he sent, and why was he sent in, into the world by, the, by his Father? And who is his Father who sent him? And of what sort is that? that eon to which we shall go. For what did he mean when he said to us, this eon to which you will go is of the type of the imperishable eon. But he did not teach us concerning the latter of what sort it is. See, look, John is right there with Christ. And Christ is telling them the Gnostic truth. And they still can't get it. We're the 120. The apostles weren't. They still can't get it. I can tell you right now. The type of the imperishable eon. We're going to live eternal. The imperishable eon. The any eon which is the type that you don't die. Of where we came from. The pleroma. Here. We, the eon happens again. And we become eternal. What does the Gospel of Thomas say? Do you, you understand all these interpretations? You figure them out. You're not going to die. Right? Okay. So this is the imperishable eon. Okay, now straight away, while I was contemplating these things, behold, the heavens opened, and the whole creation which is below heaven shone, and the world was shaken. The earth was shaken, because we know the world is the system of things. See, even in here, there's messed up stuff, messed up mistake stuff, because of religion. I'll show you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I was afraid. And behold, I saw in the light a youth who stood by me. While I looked at him, he became like an old man, and he changed his likeness again, becoming like a servant. There was not a plurality before me, but there was a likeness with multiple forms in the light, and the likeness appeared through each other, and the likeness had three forms. Father, mother, Christ. Father, mother, child. Okay. He said to me, John, John, why do you doubt? Or why are you afraid? You are not unfamiliar with this image, are you? That is, do not be timid. I am one who is with you always. I am the father. I am the mother. I am the son. The three polarities. Okay, the, the, the trinity. I am the undefiled and incorporable. I am the undefiled and incorporable one. Now I have come to teach you what is and what was and what will come to pass, that you may know the things which are not revealed and those which are revealed, and to teach you concerning the unwavering race of the perfect man, of the perfect man, the race of man, not God. Now, therefore, lift up your face, that you may receive the things that I shall teach you today, and may tell them to your fellow spirits who are from the unwavering race of the perfect man. Okay, now see... Yeah, Christ, he saw a child, then he saw a grown man, then he saw a servant, then he saw a teacher. Christ looked to everybody different. Because Christ can look like anything. Right? Anything. 
And that's why this is said right here. Okay. And I asked to know, and I asked to know it, and he said to me, the monad, the monad is the father, the divine source. Okay. The monad is a monarchy with nothing above it. It is he who exists as supreme. It says God here in brackets, but I crossed it out and put supreme because I'm going to show you why. Because it's an insult to be calling the Father Holy God or a God or any God. A God's an archon and God's a title that the devil created. Okay? So I crossed, so here I go again. The monad is a monarchy with nothing above it. It is he who exists as supreme and father of everything. The invisible one who is above everything, who exists as in, in corruption, which is in the pure light into which no eye can look. No outer material eye can look. The inner eye is the Father Holy Mind. Okay. He is the invisible spirit of whom it is not right to think of him as a God or something similar. For he is more than a God since there is nothing above him, for no one lords it over him, for he does, for he does, for he does not exist in something inferior to him, since everything exists in him, for it is he who established himself. He is eternal, since he does not need anything. Eternal means he never had a beginning. He always existed. Eternal. Okay. Infinite means it's had a beginning but will never end. Okay. He is eternal since he does not need anything, for he is total perfection. He did not lack anything that he might be completed by it. Rather, he is always completely perfect in life. He is illimitable since there is no one prior to him to set limits to him. He is unsearchable since there exists no one prior to him to examine him. He is immeasurable since there is, was no one prior to him to measure him. He is invisible since no one saw him. How could someone see him if, if he, he, that's why he's invisible. He's eternal, he's, he's existence, and no one, nothing came before him to see him, so he's invisible. It makes sense. Things gotta make sense, okay? He is invisible since no one saw him. He is eternal since he exists eternally. He is ineffable since no one was able to comprehend him to speak, to speak about him. He is unnameable since there was no one prior to him to give him a name. That's why Father Christ calls him holy because that's what he is. He's perfect. He's holy. Father holy. Hallowed be thy name. Watch what it's going to say right here. He is immeasurable light which is pure, holy. He is, is, he is immeasurable light, which is pure holy. Holy is his name. And immaculate. He is in, ineffable, being perfect in, in incorruptibility. He is not in perfection, nor in blessedness, nor is div in divinity, but he is far superior. He is not corporal, nor is he in incorporal. He is neither large, nor is he small. There is no way to say what is his quant quantity, or what is his quality. For no one can know him. Here's a Gnostic, here's, here's reading apoc apocryphal. It says, for no one can know him. N-O, no one can know him. The way they taught us to write and speak and, and read and say and, and all that is that that's, but watch what it's saying. No one can know him, which, which is meaning is, as far as the way they taught us how to read and talk, that nobody can't know him. But what it's saying here, apocryphally, no one can know him. I am no one. I am one who knows. I am someone. I am one of the one who knows. I am no one. I can know him. No one can know him. Get it? You're all no ones too. All the 120s are no ones. We are no ones. Like, like uh, Caesar said in the Planet of the Apes, no, no. Nine times he said no. He didn't say N-O. He said K-N-O-W. No. All right. He is not someone among other beings 
Rather, he is far superior. Not that the, not that the, what? Not that he is simply superior, but his essence does not partake in the eons nor in time. For he was part, for, for he who partakes in an eon was prepared beforehand. Time was not a, appointed to him, since he does not receive anything from another. Nobody appoints anything to the Father. Time is something that came to be, and it doesn't even exist. Okay? For it would, it would be received on loan. For he who precedes someone, precedes someone does not lack that he may receive from him. For rather, it is the latter that looks expectantly at him in his life. For the, perfect, for the perfection is majestic. He is pure, immeasurable mind. He is pure, immeasurable mind. Divine source mind is the source Father Holy who is the now. Now is eternal. I explained that in another video. I might explain a little bit more in this one. Okay. He is an eon giving eon. He is life giving life. He is a blessed Blessedness giving blessed one. He is knowledge giving knowledge. He is goodness giving goodness. He is mercy and redemption giving mercy. He is grace giving grace. Not becoming, not because he possesses it, but because he gives the immeasurable, incomprehensible light. How am I to speak with you about him? His eon is indestructible, at rest and existing in silence, resting and being prior for, to everything. For he is the head of all the eons, and it is he who gives them strength in his goodness. For we know not the ineffable things, and we do not understand what is immeasurable, except for him who came forth from him, namely from the Father. For it is he who told it to us alone. Christ, the Son of Man, right? For it is he who looks at himself in his light, which surrounds him. That's his mother man. The I mean, that's the Father. Okay, namely the spring of the water of life. That's the Mother that surrounds Him. And it is He who gives to all the eons and in every way, and who gazes upon His image, which He sees in the spring of the Spirit. His image, the Holy Spirit, water. It is He who puts His desire into His water, into His water light, which is in the spring of the pure light water, which surrounds Him. Okay? They use the word desire here, but it's will. Will, not desire. Because desire is want, and want is the opposite of will. Okay? All right. Now, um, so this is Christ who lets us know all this stuff. Okay? Now, all right. Now, here we go. And his thought performed a deed, and she came forth. She came forth. And his thought performed a deed, and she came forth. She, the Holy Spirit, Mother Man, okay? Namely, she who had appeared before him in the shine of his light. And his thought, okay, okay. This is the first power which was before all of them and which came forth from his mind. What comes from mind first? Thought came first from mind, th first. That's the Holy Spirit, thought. The image of him because he's invisible. Because of her, we can see from within. But without her, we can't see. So she makes it possible to see from within because she's the image of the invisible father. She brings forth image that we are able to see from within. Okay? Okay. She, she who had appeared before him in the shine of his light. This is the first power which was before all of them and which came forth from his it from his mind. She is the forethought of the all. Her light shines like his light, the perfect power, which is the image of the invisible virginal spirit, who is perfect, the first power, the glory of Barbello, the perfect glory in the eons, the glory of the revelations, she glorified the virginal spirit, and it was she who praised him, because thanks to him she had come forth. This is the first thought, his image, she became, this is the first thought, his image. Not it isn't only the first thought, it is thought, period, first. Okay? Okay. 
she became the womb of everything. That's why I call the Holy Spirit everything. I know everything and everything knows me. The Holy Spirit is everything. I know her and she knows me. So when I say I know everything and everything knows me, I'll speak Gnostic, not like I know everything. And that's not what I mean. Okay. Okay. For it is she who is prior to them all. The mother, father, the first man. Duh. If the Holy Spirit's the first man, that's her name. She's man. First dog, dog. First bird, bird. First cat, cat. First man, man. That's her name, man, the Holy Spirit. The first man, the Holy Spirit. The trice male, the trice powerful, the trice named androgynous one, and the eternal eon among the invisible ones, and the first to come forth. She requested from the invisible virginal spirit, that is Barbello, she is Barbello, to give her foreknowledge the second power. See, here's the first power, fourth thought, which I just read. Now, foreknowledge is the second power of all her five powers. Okay. And the spirit consented, and when he had consented, the fourth foreknowledge came forth, and it stood by the forethought. It originates from the thought of the invisible virginal spirit. It glorified him and his perfect power, Barbello, for it was for her sake that it had come into being. An eon, power, foreknowledge, forethought. Okay? In my book, I explain about this major, big time. That's too much to explain. Only in the book, in this book, can it be explained, really explained this, how this is, because it's too much. But in the book, you'll, you'll understand. Okay, so, uh, it read, okay, it glorified him and his perfect power, Babala, for it was for her sake that it had come into being. And she requested again to grant her indestructibility, the third power of hers, the third power of the Holy Spirit, indestructibility. In my book, I explain more how th there's two parts to these powers. <laughs> I, if I start doing that, I'm going to... Let me just stick to this. I'm going to stick to this. I want to explain that, but it's in the book. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. And she requested again to grant her indestructibility, and he consented. When he had consented, indestructibility came forth, and it stood by the thought and the forethought. It glorified... the invisible one, and Barbello, the one for whose sake they had come into being. And Barbello requested to grant her eternal life. And the invisible spirit consented. And when he had consented, eternal life came forth. And they attended and glorified the invisible spirit and Barbello, the one for whose sake they had come into being. And she requested again to grant her truth. And the invisible spirit consented. And when he had consented, truth came forth, and they attended and glorified the invisible excellent spirit and his Barbello, the one for whose sake they had come into being. Now what? Truth. Forethought, foreknowledge, indestructibility, eternal life, and truth. Okay, water is her essence. You cannot destroy water, indestructibility. Okay? It's, it's eternal. Water is eternal. And it gives life, eternal life. Okay? Forethought. The before, before, the thought before. Foreknowledge, the knowledge before. To know before, to know from the now. See? Before, foreknowledge, forethought. When you get these two powers down, forethought, you create the future. You create the future to be the now when the now happens. You create from forethought, the beginning thought, before thought. You create, that's how we create within, with idea and stuff like that. Knowledge with idea. Forethought is a great power. For knowledge is to know before, like what's going to happen before, to knowing before. There's knowledge, but this is foreknowledge. She knows before. So before what anything going to happen ever, she knows. Foreknowledge. Now, if you get this power, you know what's going to happen. You can change it, what's going to happen, with forethought. Because you know what's going to happen. So with forethought, you can change what's going to happen and hook it up for you. Watch. I haven't got this down yet, 
but the Holy Spirit does has got it down. There'll be sometimes I'll I'll complain about something that's going on. I'm darn it. Because her foreknowledge knows what's gonna happen if I continue that. So she does something to help me to mess it up. And I think it's being messed up, but she's setting me in the right path. See? And then I realize and I go, ah. Oh. So my forethought and foreknowledge is starting to turn on because I'm aware of what she's doing. See? We think that things are going wrong. Sometimes the world is messing with us. But sometimes it's the Holy Spirit setting us in the straight, getting us, putting us in the right path. Okay? Pay attention to intuition. She tells us. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So these are her four, the five powers of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're made in her shape. See? The five-pointer star shape with these five powers. Now watch. This just came to me, by the way. I've been trying to figure out why truth is here and why truth is here. But now I know why truth is the fifth power. Truth is the fifth power. I'm getting chills. I'm getting chills. Because we are in the fifth age of truth. <laughs> Back then, it's connected to here and now. Because there's no time with us. It's all instant. All now. Time's bullshit. We get this power now. <laughs> Things happen for us now. We don't have to wait for them. Wait. Late. Tardy. That's time. Okay. Okay, now here we go. This is the pentad of the eons. Penta, five, of the eons. Of the Father, which is the first man, Holy Spirit. The image of the invisible spirit. It is the forethought, which is Barbello, and the thought, and the foreknowledge, and the indestructibility, and the eternal life, and the truth. This is the androgynous pentad of the eons, which is the decad of the eons, which is the Father. Because, see, it's a decad. Okay, uh, it's, I'm, I'm not, uh, I want to make it seem like I'm trying to push the book or nothing. But see, the deepest power part of knowledge of the Christ power of understanding this and this is in the book. It's, it would take, it would it'd be really hard for me to it'd take a long time and a lot where you could just read it over and over. If, if you can't get, you could read it until you get it. Okay, and there's those who have got it because they know, right? But see, I'm going to do a little bit of it. Truth is there and truth is there. Because truth goes with the father. He's truth. And truth goes with the mother. She's truth. Okay? For thought. For is the father. He was before the thought. Thought is the mother. For is the father. Knowledge is the mother. Before the knowledge came. Indestructibility. Indestructibility for the mother means she can't be destroyed. Water cannot be destroyed. Indestructibility for the Father is indestructibility. The ability to destroy from within. From within, the light of the Father destroys the deficiency, the division, the imperfection, the material powers, the dead powers. That's the power. That's what this means also. And then eternal life. Because of the Holy Spirit, life came forth. Eternal is the Father. So now we have life that's eternal. You see the two powers that go together? So that's why it's the pentod of the eons and it's the decod of the eons. Because decod means ten. So this is twice. That's why there's two five-pointed stars here on the book. That's some of the reason why there's a lot to it. It's <laughs> anyway, so like when I do the second book, the first book has the, the eternal male powers here and the eternal femme powers here. But make the two a one. The second book is going to have one circle star, but it's going to be two five-pointed stars together. And what? I seen that symbol on a show about a church in France called the Church of Mary Magdalene. And up on the wall, in one of those stained glass windows, I seen it. And it was the two five-pointed stars together circled in the church. Not a crucifix. I seen that. And I'm like, ha, ah, I know what that is. Every time I see something, I know what it is. It blows me away. I'm like, how do I know? I just just do. And so, anyways. <laughs> so, okay, let's get continue with this before I, <laughs> before I get us out of here. 
Okay, let me see. Where is that? Where am I? Okay, yeah. This is the... Okay. Which is the Dekad of the eons, which is the Father. See, which is the Father. The Father and the Mother, Dekad, Pentad. Anyway, okay. And he looked at Barbello with the pure night, which surrounds the, with, which surrounds the invisible spirit, and which his and with his spark, and he conceived from him. He begot a spark of light with a light resembling blessedness, but it does not equal his greatness. This was an only begotten child of the mo mother father which had come forth. It is the only offspring, the only begotten one of the father, the pure light, the son of man. I'm getting chilled. The son of man, right? They brought forth the son of man. And the invisible virginal spirit rejoiced over the light which came forth, that which was brought forth first by the first power of his forethought, which is Barbello. And he anointed it with his goodness until it became perfect, not lacking in any goodness, because he had anointed it with the goodness of the invisible spirit. And it attended him as he poured it upon it. And immediately, when it had received from the spirit, it glorified the Holy Spirit and the perfect forethought, for whose sake it had come forth. And it, re and it re re requested to give it a fellow worker, which is the mind. And he consented gladly. And when the invisible spirit had consented, the mind came forth, and it attended Christ, glorifying him and Barbello. And all these came into being in silence. All this happened in silence. Invisible silence. Water is not invisible. The pleroma is limitless water that's lit up brighter than any than the sun and we can see that because we are that stashed inside here okay invisible water eternal light water okay so in the pleroma that's how it is okay and silence there the sound that we hear there is mind sound thought sound we don't hear material sound because there's no material in the pleroma it's because of material why there's want and need and jealousy, and envy, and hate, and murder, and lying, and cheating. It's because of material. All right. Okay. And when the invisible spirit had consented, the mind came forth, and it attended Christ, glorifying him and Barrel, and all these came into being in silence. Okay. And the mind wanted to perform a deed through the word of the invisible spirit, and his will became a deed, and it appeared with the mind and the light glorified and the light glorified it and the word followed the word the image word the word followed the will for because of the word Christ the divine autonomous created everything now, now you see you remember in the Bible uh, John the first John not not the little not the three the, the first big John the first one how it says in the beginning was the word and the word was a man. No, and the word was with man. And the word was a man. That's how it's supposed to go. But it says, and the word was with God. And the word was a God. That's bullshit. Religion crap. They altered it. Okay? That's, and then it says, nothing was created beside, unless it was created by him. See, that gospel was a Gnostic gospel. The John gospel, it was a, it was a Mary Magdalene gospel. And they altered it. And they put the title John. That's the Da Vinci Code. That's why Mary Magdalene isn't sitting in the place of John. She's like this in the place of John. Because it's she's the beloved apostle, not John. Christ wasn't gay. Okay. So then, Christ the divine autonomous created everything. That's what it says in that gospel. It don't say that in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And his, and his spirit moved to and fro above the waters. That's Sophia moving to and fro because she's tripping out that she brought this God and this evil shit forth. We'll talk about it right here. But uh, uh, but see, that's another beginning. That's the beginning of the universe. We're talking in the beginning of the Pleroma, the eternal realm. Not this shit place. Okay? Christ the divine created everything. And the eternal life and his will and the mind and the foreknowledge attended and glorified the invisible spirit and Barbella for whose sake they had come into being. And the Holy Spirit completed the divine autogonist, his son. Now watch. See, religion writes 
they because of religion stuff gets in here put in here even a little bit of stuff messed up stuff of religion look what this idiots look what's going on here and the Holy Spirit which we know as man and which we know as the mother of life right completed the divine autogenous his son his her son her son together with together with Barbello that he may attend the mighty and invisible virginal spirit as the divine autogenous the Christ when he had honored with a mighty voice whom he had honored with a mighty voice he came forth through the forethought and the invisible virginal spirit placed the divine antagonist over truth of truth over everything and he subjected to him every authority and the truth which is in him that he may know the all which had been called with a name exalted above every name for that name will be mentioned to those who are worthy of it in the age of knowledge that name is holy hallowed be thy name that's the name. Okay. For from the light, which is the Christ, and the indestructible through the gift of the Spirit, the four lights appeared from the divine antagonist. He expected that they might attend him. And the three are will, thought, and life. This is the Trinity, and this is how things came to be. Mind, thought, life. Mind is the source. The first to come forth is thought. And then thought brought Christ forth, who's life. Mind, thought, life. That's the trinity. Father, mother, child. Okay? But also, will, the first power is will. Because it has to be. you got to figure it out. you got to figure it out ap apocryphally. See? Thought's not the first power. Will's the first power. Because the father had to will thought to come to be. The father is not thought. The Holy Spirit's thought. So Father used the power of will to bring forth the thought, the Holy Spirit. So will is the first power, and that's why it's right here, where mind is. Mind, thought, life. Will, thought, life. Get it? Does it make sense? It's got to make sense, man. All right. Where we at? Uh, okay. Okay. And the Holy Spirit completed the divine autogenous, his son. Okay, we already read that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to start. He came forth. He came forth through the forethought. And the invisible virginal spirit placed the divine autogenous over everything. And he subjected to him every authority and the truth which is in him. That he may know the all which had been called with a mighty exalted above every name. For that name, I already read that. Okay, okay, I know, I see the Holy Spirit did that. She does that to me. The all, because she wants me to explain the all. <laughs> I knew this and it kept, it kept telling me, it kept telling me, it kept telling me. I wasn't paying attention to it. Then it made me do it. <laughs> That's what happens inside. Okay, look, the all. Look it. Things got to make sense. The eternal realm is limitless. So why would we call it the all? All means a complete number or a, a, something that's complete. All of it. All of it. But it's limitless. Why do we call it the all? All the eons. There's an all of eons. There's not limitless amounts of eons. There's only a certain amount of eons. The first ones are, the first 12 ones are here. And then there's five right here. There's actually 10. See, those are eons. There's, there's a number, a certain amount of them. So that's what the all is. Okay. For from the light, which is the Christ, and the indestructibility through the gift of the Spirit, the four lights appear from the divine antagonist. He expected that they might attend him. And the three are will, thought, and life, which I just talked about. And the four powers are un understanding, grace, perception, and prudence. Prudence means perfection. And grace belongs to the light, light eon, Armozel, which is the first angel. And there are three other eons with this eon, grace, grace, truth, and form. Okay, Armozel is the first light of the four lights. These are the four lights that, that, that came, that, that 
the Christ brought forth after the Holy Spirit. See, he is these already. This is already Christ right here. Okay? Right here. This. He's this. All this together already. Now, he's bringing these forth. So now he's bringing forth Armazel, the first eon, the first the first angel. This is an angel Armazel, a spirit angel, not a flesh angel that goes and rapes our women in chapter 6 of the Bible. But a, a spirit angel, not a flesh angel. A Holy Spirit angel, not a God angel, okay? Not a goddamn angel. <laughs> All right. So with this first, this first angel, this first light of the four lights, there are three eons with him. Grace, form, and truth. Grace is the greatest, is like one of the, the greatest power that you could use because grace is like pure magic. You get the grace of the Father, you get, to, well, you'll see how grace is used, it's going to be used. Okay, form, to form things, to form from within your mind, and truth, that it's going to be true, it's going to be real. Okay, now, so there's that one, okay. And he joined with his Eric. Oh wait, now that's where, not where I'm at. And there are three other eons with his eon, with his eon, grace, truth, and form. And the second light is Oriel, who has been placed over the second eon. And there are three other eons with him: conception, perception, and memory. Oriel, the second angel, perception, conception, and memory. Those are the next three eons that go with him. Then the okay, and the third light is Deviathai, who has been placed over the third eon, and there are three other eons with him: understanding, love, and idea. Understanding, love, and idea go with the angel Deviathai. Okay, and the fourth eon was placed over the fourth light, Eleleth, and and there are three other eons with him: perfection, peace and wisdom. These are the four lights which attend the divine antagonist. Aleleth, perfection, peace, and wisdom. Aleleth is the angel that went down to, to speak with Norea because Aleleth is closer to down, to, to, to this hell place because it's at the end. Notice wisdom, the last one. That's Sophia, the lowest one. She's the one that screwed up and brought this crap forth. Okay, these are the four lights which attend the divine antagonist, and these are the twelve eons which attend the son of the mighty one. These are the twelve powers that are good for us, but the twelve of the calendar, that zodiac crap, that's not good for us. This is, okay. The antagonist the Christ, through the will and the gift of the invisible spirit, and the twelve eons belonging to the son of the autogonist, and all things were established by the will of the Holy Spirit through the autogonist. And from the foreknowledge of the perfect mind, through the revelation of the will of the invisible spirit and the will of, of the autogonist, the perfect man appeared. All that was said right there is that Christ created Adam and Eve with these 12 powers. That's what they just said here, okay? But see, because of religion, what I was telling you, and because they all these thousands of years keeping women down like they're nothing, watch. The will of the invisible spirit and the will of the autogonist, the perfect man, the first revelation and the truth. It is he whom the virginal spirit called Pegara Adamus, and he placed him over the first eon with the mighty one. So Adam was created by these. What they're not telling you, what I know, and because we know this, the guys who wrote this back then don't know, they didn't know, we know. When Adam was created, so was Eve. Eve and Adam were created at the same time. They were both created together. They didn't just make Adam. They made Adam and Eve at the same time together. So it's, so right here when it says, It is he whom the virginal spirit called Pegar Adonis, and he placed him over the first eon with the mighty one, the antagonist, the Christ, by the fourth light, Armazal. 
and with him are his powers. And the invisible one gave him a spiritual invincible power. And he spoke and glorified and praised the invisible spirit, saying, It is for your sake that everything has come into being, and everything will return to you. I shall praise and glory you and the octagonist, glorify you and the octagonist, and the eons, the three, the father, the mother, and the son, the perfect power, the trinity. Okay. But see, Christ placed Adam and Eve. Christ and Adam and Eve, they reside here with grace, form, and truth in the eternal realm, the pleroma. This is where they reside, at the top, right? Arms up. The Holy Spirit and the Father are up here. They reside here with Adam and Eve reside there. Adam and Eve. Don't forget the fans. Okay. I shall place the glory... Okay, wait a minute. And, it's, and the invisible spirit, oh, and the invisible visible one gave him a spiritual visible power. Okay, it is okay. And and he placed his son Seth. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I shall praise and glorify you and the Italians. Okay, then it goes. And he placed his son Seth over the second eon in the presence of the second light Oriel. Set. And in the now we know that there's Norea. Remember, there's only two scriptures, Norea. They don't want they never wanted you to know about Norea. They hate the femmes, they hate the women, they don't want women to have power, they don't want the women to wake up. He placed Seth and Norea. Seth and Norea over Oreal. They call it the seed of Seth. Yeah, but it's the children of Norea. It's just seed of Seth. It's children of Norea. The children come from the fam, not the male. Okay. Now watch. And he placed his son Seth over the second. And he placed his son and daughter, son Seth and his daughter Norea, over the second eon in the presence of the second light Oriel. And in the third eon, the seed of Seth was placed over the third light Debiathai. The seed of Seth, which which is 120 children of Norea, are placed here with the Viathai. And the power, okay, let me get back to Seth and Norea. Oria. Where Seth and Norea are, perception, conception, and memory are their great powers. Perception to perceive, to conceive, and to remember who you are. Now, the seed of Seth are placed with the Viathai, the angel of the Viathai. Look at these powers. Understanding, love, and idea. Understanding, love, and idea. So the 120 seed of Seth, must, these are your powers that are, that are great for you to understand, have an understanding, to have idea, and to love. Okay? And then where are we at? And the souls of the saints were placed there. The souls of the saints are here too, but... It's like, whoop de doo What can saints do? What souls of saints? Whatever. I don't care about it. If it doesn't, it's not irrelevant. What I give a shit. Care. Okay. And in the fourth eon, the souls were placed of those who do not know the pleroma and who did not repent at once, but who prayed, persisted for a while and repented afterwards. They are by the fourth light, Eleleth. These are the creatures which glorify the invisible spirit. Notice how he calls them creatures. They're the human being grandchildren that got trapped here when this universe came to be. The light that went trapped with this universe are the grandchildren of Norea. They were in Alaleth. They are from Alaleth. See, their powers are perfection, peace, and wisdom. But it was wisdom that was foolish to have these, have these from Alaleth that came and ended up trapped here. The grandchildren of Norea. All these ignorant humans that are walking around with masks on. Those are the grandchildren. They're the ones we, that's us 120, are here to save. It's hard to save ignorant people that are going like that to you, huh? Know the truth. I'm showing you the truth. This is real. This is real. And then they go, this is real. We believe bullshit. We can see, but we're stuck in belief, so we really can't see. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's what's up here. Okay, where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Okay, and the Sophia, here we go, the screw up. And the Sophia of the Epinoia, being an eon wisdom, an eon wisdom, con conceived a thought from herself and the conception of the invisible spirit and foreknowledge. She wanted to bring forth a likeness out of herself without the consent of the spirit. He had not approved and without her, cons without her consort. See how I find it? Christ made Sophia to be his consort because she is the lowest of the powers. Christ is the highest of the powers, grace. So by connecting the highest with the lowest, we make equality, and we're all equal, okay? So we're right. And without his c consideration, and though the, pers the person of her maleness had not approved, and she had not found her agreement, and she had thought without the consent of the spirit and the knowledge of her, uh, of her agreement, yet she brought forth. And because of the invisible power which is in her, her thought did not remain idle, and something came out of her which was imperfect and different from her appearance, because she had created with, without her consort, and it was di dissimilar to the likeness of his mother, of its mother, for it has another form. And when she saw the consequences of her desire, it changed into a form of a lion-faced serpent, the Chinese dragon, the Aztec dragon. The dragon, eyes looking forward at you with like a lion, hair like a lion, and it's a serpent. <coughs> okay? And its eyes were like lightning fire with which flash. She cast it away from her outside that place that no one of the immortal, immortal ones might see it. For she had created in ignorance because she did not know what would happen. That's ignorant. Okay? And she surrounded it with a luminous cloud. And she placed a throne in the middle of the cloud that no one might see it except the Holy Spirit, the Mother of Life, who is called the Mother of the Living. She's not, it says she's, the Holy Spirit's called the Mother of the Living, but the Holy Spirit is the Mother of Life, of the Living. Okay. And she called his name Yaltabath. This is the first archon. See? Archons are gods. They're not entities that get in your mind and they're not the that bullshit that people are making up. They're gods and there's no more gods so there's no more archons. This is the first archon <laughs> who took a great power from his mother. The great power is the breath of life. That's what he took from her. And he removed himself from her and moved away from the places in which he was born. He became strong and created for himself other eons with a flame of luminous fire which still exists now. That's the stars and the sun, this burning up material. And he joined with his arrogance which is in him and begot authorities for himself. The name of the first one is Athoth. I'm going to go through this part, but I really don't care about the gods. What do I need to care about the gods for? They were here. They were pieces of shit. They're not here no more. What do I care? I don't care. What I care is their descendants that are here and what they're doing and what we got to do to stop them. Okay? We all we got to do, I don't want to stop them. I want to stop them from stopping us. Okay. The fourth one is Yabel. The fifth one is Adonai, who is called Sabbath. The sixth one is Cain, whom the generations of men call the sun. What? So Cain's soul is in the sun? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> the servant is Abel. The seventh is Abel. The eighth is Abrasine. The ninth is Yobel. The tenth is Amarapil. Ar the eleventh is Malkir Ardomain. The twelfth is Belius. It is he who is over the depth of hate, 
And he placed seven kings. Notice how they said 12? These are names of 12 gods. Maybe six femme and six male. I know that he named his daughter, who's Athena, who's Isis. He named her Sophia after his mother. So that Athena, Isis, whatever that main femme god that was here, that guy, that was Yalthabas' daughter that he named Sophia. But she, she got other names from other cultures. Okay. And he placed seven kings, each corresponding to the, the firmament of heaven, seven over the seven heavens, and five over the depth of the abyss, that they may reign. Reign? Rule? And he shared his fire with them. But he did not send forth from the power of the light which he had taken from his mother, for he is ignorant darkness. He does not use the power. He can't. You don't. And when the light and had mixed with the darkness, it caused the darkness to shine. And when the darkness had mixed with the light, it darkness the light, and it became neither light nor dark, but it became dim. Now the archon who is now the archon who is weak has three names. The first name is Yaltabath, the second is Saklas, and the third is Samael. And he is impious in his er arrogance, which is in him, for he said, I am God, and there is no other God be besides me. He said, I am God. If he's the first to come forth with this universe, and he created a title for himself, and he said, I am God, then he created the title God. And if he's the devil, Saklas, Yeltabath, Samael, then God means devil. Wake up! All these religious people, and God, God, with God, and the God within. That's what Myra, Myra Myers was saying on a video I saw him about his book. The, the God within, wake up the God within. God within. If you say that, you are yourself up. There's no God within. God was outside. Christ is within. So these so-called wannabe Gnostics who are coming out trying to interpret this stuff, and they're saying God, God this and God, and the God within you and God, they're screwing you up. There's no God within. Christ is within. God was outside and God is a was. There's no more God. There's no more gods. Stop saying God. Say God damn. That's better. God damn God. He's dead. <laughs> and there is no other God beside me. For he is ignorant of his strength. The place from which he had come. And the archons created seven powers for themselves. And the archons, archons, created seven powers for themselves. And the powers created for themselves six angels for each one until they became 365 angels. Hmm. 365 angels. Hmm. 365 bogus days of the year with the bogus 12-month calendar. God and his angels and religion. And what's his name? Pope Gregory. The Gregorian calendar. <laughs> Religion created that fuck messed up calendar. Okay. And there are the bodies and, and and there are the bodies belonging with the, the with the names. The first is Athoth. He has a sheep's face. The second is Eloi. He has a donkey's face. The third is Astaphias. He has a hyena's face. The fourth is Yao. He has a serpent's face with seven heads. And the fifth is Sabbath. He has a dragon's face. Now look. These gods, these archons, existed before everything else in this universe. Because Yaltabath, the first archon, created the other 11 archon gods, right? First. Then after that, they started doing things. Okay? Well, look. When they're saying Athoth had a donkey's face or a sheep's face or whatever they're saying, what kind of face these gods had? How could they have, how could he have a donkey's face? There's no donkeys yet. His face looked like that. Later on, he made horses and cows and that God made those here. See, where at was a reptilian, that one made the, the dragons, the, the insect face, the, the, these different ones. There's only seven here. In the zodiac, there's the shellfish, God, the, diff, the insect God, the different gods, see? 
Did you get it? You understand what I'm what I'm trying to get through here? Okay. And sixth is Adonai. He had a monkey's face. The seventh is Sabai, Sabi. He has a shining fire face. This is the sevenness of the week. Okay, these first seven gods, this is the sevenness of the week. Do you see this? Sevenness of the week. God loves seven because it's time. It's the number of times. Seven. Seven days a week, right? But that seven goes into 364. They don't go into 365. And notice they put 365 angels. See how religion's going with the God stuff. That's why I don't care about this God stuff, Archon stuff. When you read it, you, hear, you see stuff of crappy religion in it. I don't care about it. There's a, there's a gospel in here called On the Origin of the World. Where is it? On the Origin of the World. It's a Nazi gospel. What do I give a damn about the world? And on the origin of it. God and the gods. This On the Origin of the World is about all the shit that the gods did. And there's a lot of crap in there. So I don't mess with it. It's a Nazi gospel, but I don't mess with it. I don't care about the goddamn gods, the archons. All I care about is us. The children of light. The Christ children coming into being. The gods are gone. What I give a crap. It's their descendants, their great-grandchildren who are here ruling over us, doing the same evil crap that he used to do, but they got to do it different. But now we're going to kick their butts because before they had the gods protecting them. They're gone. Now we're waking up. They ain't going to have no gods protecting them. And we're powerful, more greater than they are. They're going to be out. It's our time. It is the now time. It is the now time for us who are of the now that is here the kingdom of heaven who is here we are the now that is here we are the kingdom of heaven that's here we are the now that's here the kingdom of heaven is here and now all right that's half of the book of the secret john book of john and i'll do the other half on the next video all right enjoy peace and make the two in one